Hi, I'm Dr. Melina Bellin from the University of Minnesota Ann Platts Children's Hospital. In this video, I will tell you a little bit about our study entitled Quality of Life Improves in Pediatric Patients After Pancreatectomy and Islet Autotransplant for Chronic Pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis is an inflammatory condition of the pancreas that can result in severe pain. Although it is uncommon in children, for those who are affected, they may have pain on a daily basis, have recurrent hospitalizations, or even be able to attend, unable to attend school or participate in usual childhood activities. Unfortunately, medical treatment options for chronic pancreatitis are quite limited. These patients are often reliant on pain medications, including narcotics, to control the disease process and the pain. However, there are surgical options. One option is to remove the entire pancreas in a process called total pancreatectomy in order to get rid of the cause of the pain. However, a pancreatectomy alone would always result in diabetes because it removes the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas. So an islet autotransplant can be performed in which the islets are removed from the pancreas and infused back into the liver of the patient, where they start to work over a period of weeks to months and hopefully prevent or minimize the surgical diabetes. In this study, we attempted to look in more detail at the quality of life for these children after pancreatectomy and islet transplant. We followed 19 children prospectively from before surgery through over two years after surgery. We gave children and their parents health-related quality of life assessment instruments, which included something called the SF36. The SF36 is a standardized survey instrument to collect information about health-related quality of life. These children ranged in age from 5 to 18 years and had an average age of 14 years. They were all on narcotic therapy, 70% on narcotics on a daily basis with 30% using them intermittently or not daily but for pain flares. Several children required TPN or tube feeds instead of oral nutrition before surgery. They all had recurrent hospitalizations. When we looked at health-related quality of life before surgery, we see that these children are severely affected both in physical and emotional, social, and mental functioning. The physical and mental component summary scores were almost two standard deviations below the population mean before surgery. However, they progressively improved after surgery so that by one to two years after surgery, health-related quality of life scores were normal. We saw improvement in all eight domains of the SF36 instrument with the greatest improvements in bodily pain, social and physical functioning, and physical role scores. In terms of pain and narcotic use, over 70% of patients, nearly three quarters, were able to stop narcotics entirely. In the one quarter of patients who were still using narcotic therapy, it was either very rare, meaning only a couple times a year, or daily but at a lower dose or weaning dose compared to before surgery. In terms of the diabetes outcomes, we saw that over 60% of patients either required no insulin or very low dose insulin after surgery with normal blood sugars. All patients had some evidence of islet function on testing as measured by a C-peptide level. Those patients who were most likely to be diabetic were actually patients who had prior surgeries on their pancreas. So in conclusion, we found in this study, in this small group of pediatric patients, that health-related quality of life was significantly improved after total pancreatectomy and islet autotransplant for chronic pancreas. We saw the majority of patients demonstrating improvement in both physical as well as social, emotional, and mental functioning after surgery. We saw the majority of patients either coming off insulin or using a low dose of insulin therapy, although about a third of patients were insulin dependent with multiple injections per day. Those patients who were most likely to be insulin dependent were actually those who had prior surgical interventions on their pancreas, highlighting the need to consider earlier time to total pancreatectomy in those patients with severe disease that are likely to eventually need the entire pancreas removed. We think these results are promising, but ongoing follow-up over many years is required, and we also hope to demonstrate the same findings in our adult patients at the University of Minnesota.